much uh, as time as we have. Um, nothing prohibits us from starting a couple of minutes early in the process. So good to see you here today, and I seriously mean that. We wouldn't hold these without desiring people to come. And I, and I, I guess I would start by saying that this is a town hall that's put together, unlike the majority of members of Congress who don't do town halls. We continue to want to do them. And in most cases, they are very productive. We don't expect to please everybody. Uh, but I have, I think, five more stops this afternoon for the rest of the day in the schedule of, of other places to be. Manufacturers, Gollum Center, and others to see what's going on. And uh, so we, we still want to make time for citizen involvement uh, at various times during the day. And while it may not fit your schedule perfectly in every case, we're trying. And beyond that, we do teletown halls. And uh, we do more than any member of the Michigan delegation on those as well. And we take all callers. We don't select those callers, unless, of course, they're abusive to our receptionists, swearing and whatever else. Then, you we, then we don't do all that. All callers, how can I call into one of those? So, um, you can call in like everybody else. You receive the call. So, and that's done you by call in, you that's done by an organization that we pay uh, to put out to the ma the phone call list that they have. I don't control them. We pay for that. It's so, right if you're not on it, uh, I don't know how it is. But I, know I would it. ask one thing. I would ask for the benefit of all here. And not everybody is of the same mind that comes. Please. Let's show comedy uh, for our fellow citizens and not disrupt in ways that will hurt people getting their opportunity here and even to question what's going on. And that makes a much better event. I'll state as well that if you're looking for a mistake in, in a, a, a number that I give or a year or a word, when you stand up and speak, if any of you have done public speaking, you know that there can be a misstatement that comes along. We saw with President Trump saying Toledo instead of, instead of Dayton at one point in his speech the other day. Uh, we saw Omar in a, in a tweet just the other day using B instead of me. And we can jump all over those things, but those aren't important. The issue is a message, uh, and the issue itself as we, as we try to talk about it. So, I know that there are people that have been trying to get any word, any misstatement from me, and use that in a way that's negative politically. And we could just decide it's not worth taking that risk. But we continue to do these town halls because I believe it's my responsibility uh, to go to communities all across this large district. And this is a large district. Um, and uh, and give, give the chance for an event like this. Just a little update of what's going on. Um, besides what is front and foremost in the news right now, and we'll certainly talk about that. But uh, uh, two weeks ago, a budget was passed in the House, sent to the Senate, ultimately the Senate passed it last week, and the President signed it. Uh, the budget is just that, it's a budget. It's not the spending. Ultimately, I hope we can change the spending that was in that budget. I voted against the budget. There were some good things in the budget. Uh, definitely every budget has that. But there were things that, such as a $2 trillion additional increase in our debt over the next 10 years if this budget is fully enacted, I, I can't support that. At, at, at 23, almost $23 trillion of debt right now. And the most revenue coming into the United States coffers at this time than any other time in history, and yet we're still spending too much, and interest rates on our debt are accruing still further. So I'd oppose that. Also, a mandated uh, two years without congressional oversight of debt ceiling hikes as needed. Yes, we have to pay our debts, but we ought to be debating this issue um, rather than just making it automatic. And so that, that was the reason it passed in a strong partisan vote, of course, uh, but the president committed to Speaker Pelosi uh, that
that he would sign it if she kept the agreement that he and she made together. And so he has signed that. Fortunately, we have a pro appropriations process that will be started. And that's where 12 appropriations bills will enact that budget. We don't have to enact all of that budget. So the efforts will be to reduce unnecessary spending and make sure the appropriate spending is there so that our taxpayers are served well. That'll be a that'll be a legislative process and there'll be battles that go with it as well. Uh, but I'm looking forward to being part of that. I think the president also understands that uh, we don't have to spend it all. Um, beyond that, uh, in my uh, specific efforts in committee, representing you on the Energy and Commerce Committee, uh, we passed a package of bills which included one of mine uh, dealing with the robocall challenge that's in this country. Uh, in fact, when I was speaking on my bill and committee before the, the final vote on it, uh, I got a I got a robocall that was a spam that came through on my my phone. So it, it's happening. We probably all signed up for a do not call list. It worked for a little while, and then somehow they figured out how to bypass that and get to us. So even as we pass this do not or this uh, robocall reform bill. Do I expect it to forever settle the problems? No. Uh, the bad actors out there will find some way around it, but we have to keep an effort to try to keep something that's important. We want to be able to use our phones. <coughs> but we also uh, know that there will people, be people that try to abuse them. Uh, that was passed. A number of other things going, going on. Uh, the most important in the recent days is the, is the issue of the gun violence that's taken place. Not forgetting about the knife attack that took four lives and injured several more uh, yesterday in Southern California. Uh, not forgetting about the attacks using cars and truck that also took numerous lives in a mass attack. Uh, my contention is those instruments are instruments. They're going to be there. It's the perpetrator. And we've got to get the, to, the, to the bottom of the issue, what it takes cause someone to go out and shoot multiple people, including his sister, or to walk in a Walmart uh, as a result of whether it's racism or white nationalism. Just like in the other shooting, it was an Antifa person that did that. So from the far left and the far right, why that takes place. And I think that goes to much more than just the weapon it goes to the heart, the soul, the mind of individuals that are out there. When we can, without thought, for the last number of years since Roe v. Wade, murder 60 million innocents and the value of life. When we can, when we can see, when we can see police officers um, dumped on water buckets of water on them. That says something about our respect for authorities in this country. Why has that changed? Those are issues we have to get at too. And so my, uh, my challenge to the administration, or my offer of idea to the administration is to not attempt to do something, as the word is out there, to do something using Congress. That'll be political from both sides. Both sides will try to get a leg up for the coming election, especially with the presidential election coming. It won't happen with politicians doing this now, this highly charged atmosphere. I think the president needs to call for a select commission with a date certain, and not a long date, I'm talking three, four months maximum, of authorities across the spectrum, from the anti-gun groups to the NRA, to the clergy, to the mental health practitioners, to law enforcement, <clears throat> to educators, and call them to a Grace Commission type approach to come up with a detailed outline of what they believe based upon the evidence and on the facts, not politics, should be done. Then bring that to Congress and the White House. And then based upon that expert information, nonpartisan information, say it that way, then we can work on something. Yep. 
mental health gun hearing in over so 10 that's, years. So that's the issue Mr. that Robert, needs to be done. Mr. Robert, will you support academic researchers on account Okay, uh, having, having said that, I think we'll go uh, to the questions and you all have an opportunity to get the question in. We'll get more questions. I've done a lot of town halls. We'll get more actual questions addressed if we go through this process with that moderator. And uh, we appreciate Mr. Booth being willing to do this. Help him out if you could. He will put those questions out and I think we can get through all of them. And then if there's time left, then we can open it up. Good morning. Sarah from Jackson writes, in Jackson County, we've seen a 115% increase in middle school vaping, a 53% increase in high school vaping. What is being done at the legislative level to curb this epidemic? How would you support anti-vaping legislation? Um, at this point in time, there is an effort by the, uh, even by the vaping community to get a handle on uh, underage use of vaping. I've been, been in contact with educators and parents all across the district about the concern of what uh, could be found in a backpack if they look into those backpacks, find something that looks like a thumb drive and it's a vaping tool that's been handed out to the kids and even parents up until recently uh, weren't really aware that that could be the format that's in. And we know that that's being provided by all sorts of entities to these young, young people. And it's causing problems. It is clearly an opportunity for drug abuse as well as just getting them into the smoking culture, which we've seen a significant reduction in over the past number of years. We want to keep that going. Uh, we have held hearings in the Energy and Commerce Committee. There's, uh, it's been bipartisan. That's not a partisan issue amongst us at all. And it's looking for the solution that, uh, that will work across the board. But generally speaking, it comes to the point of saying this is truly a state issue and a local issue of how they negotiate the ability to get at and find those, those issues. At the very least, we ought to allow the opportunity for authorities at a school uh, to, uh, to search backpacks, to search lockers as necessary as they see what's going on, and to be, be able to get at it. The vaping issue then becomes an adult freedom of, I guess, American freedom issue, just like smoking is still, you're free to do it. It's costing you a lot, there are a lot of taxes on it. It's, there's health risks, those are being talked about, education is going on, just as it is with vaping now, uh, but people still do it. Um, so at this point in time, I'm open. I'm open to anything that works with that, that still certainly deals with uh, uh, basic human rights and civil liberties. ACLU, of course, is pushing it back against anything that is too heavy-handed on this. And so that's a, that's a challenge we have here. But I think we finally have awakened up the vaping community, the manufacturers of vape equipment, knowing that if they allow this to continue, uh, there'll be a prohibition on the, the vape uh, product itself, itself. Elizabeth from Grass Lake writes, you recently voted against protection for people with pre-existing conditions. As someone who has a pre-existing condition, what safeguards are you for so I can have medical coverage? This was Sarah. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Grassley. Elizabeth, mm -hmm. what bill was that that I voted against? There was a bill that was specifically about protections for uh, pre-existing conditions in medical care. Which, what bill number was it? I don't know the number off the top of my head. Well, I, I don't remember voting against pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. unless, it was, it, unless it was in a motion to recommit that the Democrats had put up for political reasons that had all sorts of poison pills in it and then inserted that in the place. But they wouldn't have done that recently because they're in the majority. So they don't put up motions to recommit. It was in 2019 that um, I voted against it. I'm, I'll look He's the getting number. the number. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Repeal the ACA over six times. I have, well, the Democrats voted to repeal, repeal the, uh, the yeah. Cadillac tax we got just the two weeks ago. 
It's uh, HR 692, 692. Pre-existing Conditions Protection Act 2019. What else does it do in it? Uh, I can read you the summary. Um, oh, no, that is not the summary. <laughs> this is the whole thing. Uh, you can count on the fact that it had a lot of poison pills in it, because I've supported pre-existing conditions, including, I don't including know what, what we offered, pill is offered as a repeal or replace that John McCain voted against that, that scuttled in back in 2000. Uh, um, 2000, 2017. Uh, I've supported pre-existing conditions. I'm on legislation that has pre-existing condition coverage. It, so it's not pre-existing conditions that would been the problem. Do you want me to read any of this? Or not? Sure, sure. Um, I can read you the sections. I'm trying to find a summary here. Uh, prohibition of pre-existing condition exclusions. Prohibition of pre-existing ex exclusions continued. Um, Prohibition of pre-existing condition exclusions or other discrimination based on health status. Guaranteed availability of coverage. Um, I support a all of that. You voted against this, did you well, not? I support all of that. But the rest of the bill, read what the rest of the bill would have This is hundreds and hundreds of words. But shouldn't you um, be able to tell us what? And what I'm not sure. Yeah, right, that's what, some what kind of what I was really What is a poison have, bill we have, here? We have hundreds of bills that come in front of us. And each of those bills, if you look at my record on pre-existing condition, it's been 100% support. But when you, when you have when you have a minority party now that's changed and could put all sorts of social policy issues in it uh, that I can't support, it could have had human life issues in it. I don't I see support. any. It is a human life um, issue. Yeah. Pre-existing condition. So pre-existing. Let me let me make it very clear. I support pre-existing condition coverage and have multiple votes that way. I will not vote for a bill that has pre-existing conditions in it, uh, that, in this case, that won't even pass the Senate, uh, that has, 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 has multiple other things in it that would be poison pills. Can, can we call that 100% support? It is 100% support for that issue, but I will not support things that go against my stance that I've taken honestly in front of my constituents. And, uh, we are agree. My first constituents. Yeah. Yeah, but I've got I've got eight hundred thousand constituents, and and the majority yeah. of them voted for me. The, the majority of them voted for me. So that's that's the only answer I have. And uh, if I had that bill in front of me, and I could look at it, I could tell you the exact reason why I voted against it. And if you want to send me a letter, Sorry. we'd be glad. We'd be glad to. Uh, we'd be glad to look at that and get that to you. All right. Next question. Hey, Mark. smile, folks. It's not that bad. This it is still a great place. It is that bad. You've, you've, you've got a, you've got a majority. I, uh, I support pre-existing conditions coverage, and I voted that. Why you repeal, voted to repeal the ADA. Mark, from Milan writes, you've supported legislation against marriage equity, and then he cites the information, and voted against legislation to prevent discrimination based on sexual gender identity, he lists the amendment 1128, as recent as 2016. Now that I am able to be married to my same sex partner, should I be worried that you will continue to allow us to be disenfranchised or to push for our relationship to be legally nullified? Um, I support marriage <coughs> as defined between a man and a woman. That's the traditional marriage that we've had. It's for a purpose. Who defines it that way? And uh, it has been defined uh, all throughout our history until just recent days. And uh, bottom line is, I will continue to support marriage as defined as a relationship between a man and a woman. As far as legal opportunities for same sex relationships, we've already had those in law in will, structure, and the rest that already could be done. If you want to call it a, a different thing than marriage that has multiple reasons for binding society together, growing society, reproduction, and other things, that's a different story. So, no, I continue to see marriage as defined, that relationship Ooh. between a man and a woman. Vote him out. Vote him out. Next question. Okay, but I'm Irma from Jackson. Uh, was, right. was that your question? That's my question, but uh, I... Uh, 
this, this, this one comes. This is to that that you said you represent everyone. No, I, I, I represent the seventh district. Right, but I'm saying I don't, I don't the people per, that voted for you. Well, I, it's just a quick. Thing. I represent everybody, but some people, of course, don't want me to represent okay, them. I get that. Right. Do you mean the pre-existing condition? This is the pre-existing condition. Like your personal thought of marriage should be not interfere with the. No, that's not true. That's not true. When I've explained very carefully my positions, my con uh, convictions as well, uh, in an election process, and people still put me in. I assume, no, 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 I assume that's, that's the case. That's not what I'm saying. That's and, not what I'm saying. I'm saying I personally, my personal opinion doesn't have anything to do with what everybody else should be treated. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? You're saying you believe marriage is between a man and a woman. Right. Hey, my belief could be the same as you, but I still believe that other people have the right to be treated that's fine. That might not I, be I what I say, I, I but you're that. representing a whole. But I'm also representing a constitutional ideal. I'm representing a tradition that's in this country, and I'm representing order. You're not uh, representing and, that and, law. And, 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 and so, again, if I had not, if I had lied to the constituents who would be voting for or against me, that'd be one thing. But I've stated I'm pro-life 100% from from conception to natural death. I'm not changing that. I've never hid the fact that I support marriage as defined that relationship between a man and a woman for life. I've been very clear about that. That has been the traditional but it's position. The law now. And, it, and, and uh, anyway. Traditionally, it's also been that you couldn't interracially marry, but now legally you can. And you could be your wife. Yeah. In the, in the Bible, did, men could marry six women. Could. That was in the Bible. I mean, that's the and your whole own daughter is married to a man of color. I have no trouble with that. And all those things were, But traditionally, uh, traditionally, my daughter is married to a man. The, the bottom Let's go on the next is, question here. The, the, the you know, you know where I stand on The congressman is. Irma from Jackson, stands, Michigan, right? On what he stands, I commend him for standing for what he stands for, whether we agree with it or not. He's standing for he, for what he stands, and I applaud you for that. I applaud you for that. What, what you say is what you get, and I, I applaud you for standing on your own beliefs. It doesn't matter if anybody does not stand with you. If that's what you believe, stand for it. I applaud you so, for that. So if he's pro-slavery and he stands for I, I, I stand let's, for his belief. Let's not be absurd. I stand for okay. his belief. Let's not be let's absurd. I stand for his belief. Irma from Jackson. Against. Yes. HR 692. Did you agree with the people that you supported? No, uh, no, against. He was against it. He's a co-sponsor of 692. Right? He voted Very, against, well, against it, though. There hasn't been a vote on it. He was a co-sponsor of 692. So I think that's why you were confused saying, I support all of those things in the bill. He voted against it. He no, up last uh, night. Uh, again, <laughs> if you go to the record of vote, and again, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. remember all the numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you stop and think about how many bills go across our desk and then the ones that are voted on, it's difficult to know that. So I'm not going to respond to you except the fact that I support coverage of pre-existing conditions mm -hmm. and have not deviated on that unless it was put up in a political vote with all sorts of poison pills. Let's go on. What are you doing for caged children? That comes from Irma and Jackson. I don't support caged children at all. And that's why if you're talking about the border issues, those are the same, quote, cages that President Obama put in place. They're the exact same uh, uh, enclosures. They are put there for security for the kids and especially the women. When you think of the hundreds of people that are in closed spaces and you're gonna let a little child potentially be in the same space as a pedophile or a sex abuser. Until we get control of our border, that is what's going to be. And when I have Democrats that have opposed any type of securing of the border. It's not true either. Not which is absolutely true. It's not. It's not. It's not. Um, they, they, and it would be better if you answered rather than blame. Okay, answer for me then. What should I have I'm said? I'm asking you the I'm answer. A, I'm answering the but question. You're just saying, well, the, the Democrats, Democrats have, have opposed an in every case the border 
dollars needed to secure the border. That's only because because the wall. Need the wall. Um, okay, but so we need a wall in some places. We need Why in other places electronic surveillance. We need securing our borders. In days gone by, we didn't need that. Now there has been a push to bring people across illegally. We all want to see people come legally. That's what's made this country the melting pot, pot that it is. Why, why did That's you... been an excellent opportunity. I'm answering this question. Uh, until we secure the borders, you will not have the support of the people to the point that you can get uh, resolving the actual immigration law problem. I want to see more people that are able to come here to fill spots that our own American people won't fill. I want to, they are right. trying. That's They're the trying challenge. To apply for asylum. We've, right. got, we've got people that have, have come the legal way who deserve to be at the front of the line, who are being hindered now because we have the illegal incursion that comes in thousands and thousands of people. Thankfully, Mexico finally is helping us out. And we have 21,000 Mexican troops that have really slowed the incursion into our country. I do not want to stand in front of coffins anymore in Jackson County. In one case of a young man, who I know very well, who is dead as a result of fentanyl. And that fentanyl didn't come, didn't come from any place except across the border. And if you don't think it's coming from across the border, you're not living in reality. Sorry. Uh, because that's where it's coming, and that any that has been caught at the border gates is the minute portion of it. Fentanyl isn't just manufactured abroad. Okay, uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, sir, sir, sir. Amy from Clark Lake writes, what is the difference between socialism and farm sus subsidies? Um, I'm a farmer. <laughs> ex explain, ex who, who was that? Amy from Grass Lake. Ian? Amy. Amy. Amy from Grass Lake. Explain that to me then. I, I, I don't understand the Well, question. because you talk about not, you know, being against socialism. And it's, I, I'm just curious, like food stamps, health care for all, that would be socialism, but. And ours. Right. Farm subsidies are different because I'm just curious. Tax breaks to the top Handouts, uh, some tax socialism. breaks, some tax breaks that are out there certainly cross the socialism line where government, big government, steps in and does things that the, the free enterprise system wouldn't allow. Uh, but, but, a social, but a social safety net in certain key instances, I, I don't disagree with. I think when you have an agriculture community that is integral not only to our lives, but the lives of the world is we feed the world. When you have disaster issues, when you have weather issues like we've had here in Michigan, to have farmers that we've moved from direct subsidies for the most part, except in disaster relief, we've moved to crop insurance and we backstop that crop insurance in order to make it affordable. But in almost every year that crop insurance has been used extensively, the farmers ultimately have paid it back. We've made money off of crop insurance that goes on this to the isn't next about plan. Crop insurance. This is, this so, is about so, the so yeah. crop Practice insurance is, has helped out, and we've done away with most of the direct subsidies unless there is a disaster that takes place. In the area of social welfare assistance, there is certainly a social safety net needed for people who are down on their luck, are disabled for a period of time, uh, to help them through that process. But ultimately, when that social safety net, so-called, grows so big that it becomes an incentive for people not to take a job, but to stay on social welfare systems, then it's gone too far. That's socialism. Oppose the tariffs. I'm not a tariff lover, but right now it's Why had don't you vocally it's had it? some, it's had some great impact in getting a great deal, uh, pretty much con uh, consummated now since the Democrats last week, 14 of them, wrote to the Speaker of the House and said, Mr. Madam Speaker. We would like a vote on the USMCA replacement for NAFTA uh, in September. We it's got need nothing it. to do with the Chinese tariffs and, on uh, soybeans. Chinese will have a chance now to see that not only have we consummated the Korean trade agreement, which is a very good agreement, just ask a farmer or a manufacturer. I am a farmer. And they love it. 
No, we then, don't. Then, uh, then uh, uh, well, you're speaking as one. Uh, the majority of majority of farmers, majority of farmers love district. love the Korean Trade Agreement, and they love USMCA. In fact, they're the largest component okay. asking for they're USMCA. They're opposing the Chinese tariffs, and you have said nothing and, about. Oh, I have. No, In fact, have. I've got letters, and if you'd like to have us leave your name, we'll send you a copy of the letter I sent to the president, encouraged the Chinese. You would have a lot tariff. more respect for you, like. So, you bottom line you is. That's what we're doing, and uh, socialism would say no. We want government to control all of uh, the, the agencies and sources of, of, of government in this country. It's never worked any other place in the world. It won't work here. And if we have Medicare for all, I'm on Medicare. Uh, it will destroy Medicare even beyond what it is now. Uh, so socialism never works. Uh, everyone looks to the United States as the number one economy, which it is, number one manufacturing economy. And we take care of our people as well. Uh, the problem is, we've got to make sure we take care of the people who have the needs. Next question. Glenna and Billy from Eaton Rapids ask, do you support Senator McConnell's not bringing bills passed by the Senate before, not by the Congress, I'm sorry, before the Senate, and why? Well, I. Up until this, this term, I never thought I'd say basically anything good about the Senate. Our, our, our common joke was that uh, while the other party is our opposition, the Senate's our enemy. Um, this time, with the legislation that's gone across, pure partisan legislation that is, in most cases, totally unworkable, I'm glad the Senate has been a backstop. I hope ultimately, I hope ultimately they restrict votes on a lot of those bills. And you know what? So In fact, what we saw so took place relative to um, um, one vital piece of legislation dealing with trade was after the House Senate to the Senate on two occasions. Ultimately, even the Democrat senators saying. That's not going to pass. The legislation Take our bad, legislation to pass. Down in the Senate, you know what, that's the Senate well, vote. it's that's that's the Senate. You'll have to talk to a senator about that. That's their rules. Wait a minute. This but was right our, now, I'm glad because I voted against those bills, and I'm glad that I voted. This was our question. That was our question. And that my, was your question. Yes. And okay. what I'd like to know: if these bills are so bad, why doesn't the Senate put up their vote and let the, let yes. the senator go publicly mm -hmm. on the record of not voting for something, and why? Ask, they not ask Mitch no. McConnell. Why don't well, you ask? Why is it? Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy. I told you. I'm not lying to you. I'm happy they didn't bring it up. Why is it ask different Mitch now than, than it was pre-2018? Why we, was everything all right that did then? Now it's different. Because we had sent bipartisan bills over to the Senate. That's not true. Yeah, no, that's not true. Uh, we have sent numerous bipartisan bills that's that were signed true. by Barack Obama as well as President, President uh, uh, Trump. How many The red flag law. Well, there's always partisanship. That's political parties. You'll have some. So put them. But you have to, to work it forward. Let, let me also. Wait a minute. Wait. Some of you, some of you don't understand that I do attempt to work in a bipartisan way. Well, why do I say that? <laughs> the University of Virginia and Vanderbilt University, two bastions of conservatism, right? No, not at all. I think UVA is pretty conservative. UVA and Vanderbilt have what they call the Center for Effective Legislation. For this past term, they listed me as the number one most effective member of the U.S. House Republican, 30th out of 237 members. Why? For my bipartisan effort, and you just have to ask people like Debbie Dingell, Dan Kildee, and others from other states who I've worked with, co-sponsored as well as they've co-sponsored my bills, and they were signed by both Obama in the past and Trump and uh, Debbie Dingell is listed as the most effective legislature in the Michigan delegation from her party as well. So while I am a conservative and ranked number one most effective, uh, most conservative member of the Michigan delegation, 92% conservative rate, I still put that into an effective uh, process as well. And we'll continue to do that. But I am a conservative. I'm not a socialist. I am a conservative. And I've never lied about that. And that's why the people have elected me in my sixth term. Vote him out. Vote him out. Lauren.
from Celine simply states, mental health and guns. That's me. I, um, I listened to your discussion of um, wanting me mental health, more mental health coverage to prevent uh, mass shootings and shootings in general, you know, shootings by suicide are actually the top problem if you look at numbers of people um, killed. Or suicides by gun. Yeah, suicides by gun. Right. Right. And uh, I'm a physician and a mom and uh, live in this district, and I am dealing with more teenage mental health distress than I ever have. And it's not that I'm worried that these kids are necessarily going to go into their sh schools and shoot it. They are frightened. Our kids are terribly frightened to go to school. My kids are, my kids that I call my patients are, they are frightened, they are anxious, they are scared about the environment, they're scared about global warming. We tell kids to read, pick up a newspaper. What do they see across the newspaper or on their screens every day? They see the planet, scientists everywhere, the planet is in trouble. They see somebody like you say, I have Medicare, but not to share. I don't think you would have voted for Medicare, sir, when it came across. If I you, you wouldn't. absolutely wouldn't have it. Now have. you have hypocritically take I it. I don't have a choice. And you hypocritically choice. take it. You could buy your own doctor, you insurance. Know, know. Well, you you could buy, you could buy fee for service. You I, could pay I, out of pocket, but I you take that anything. government program. You're, you take that government program. That's socialism. That, that is socialism. a government program. You wouldn't have. But my question, to get back question. to my question, my question is when we say that famous Mr. Rogers quote. Look for the helpers. What are you doing to be a helper for our kids? Because you're not working on the environment. You're not working, fine. You believe in the Second Amendment, fine. Show me where you're funding mental health care. Show me why I can't send my patients for mental health care when they're worried. If I have a kid I'm worried is gonna shoot up his school, I have waiting lists, I have no recourse for them. If a 20 year old man with no health insurance because we have health insurance is having mental health problems, there is no red flag law. There is nothing I can do. My hands are tied. So when you say, sir, I can't support gun control, but I'll support mental health care. I never care, said that. Tell me what you are doing. Why? How are you being a helper for my patients and my children? All sorts of ways. 21st Century Cures Act. Are you familiar with that? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about my children who are scared to go to school because they're afraid they're going to sh get okay, shot Okay, well, I'm, I'm... I'm not talking about whether you're going to find a cure for when they get cancer when they're 65 or pediatric cancer, which you... I strongly believe in, but which is being used to distract from some of these other things. How are you helping our kids who are frightened by the headlines? I would encourage uh, parents to act as parents. Thank you. I would encourage parents not to be friends with their kids so much as parents with their kids. I would encourage them to tell the truth that they have a very slim, slim chance in their school of, of having an event like we've read about in relatively few number of schools, not denigrating the loss of life. But they can go to their schools here in Jackson County. They can go to the schools in Lenaway County. They can go to schools in Eaton County. And they can generally feel that they are safe. And their parents need to tell them that. So they need to also push back, parents push back Parents need to push back against the media as well. So there's nothing you're not going to do. No, no, I'm going to tell you. Saying. You wanted you're you talked. To be a better mom. You yeah. talked. Yeah. Well, you may. I'm not saying about you being a better mom, <laughs> but people ought to be better parents <laughs> because we have kids. Their kids should not be walking around in fear. My friends in Dayton. Now the I, same thing. I, I've gone to numerous schools on various issues dealing with drug issues. <laughs> I've gone on cyberbullying. We brought a young lady in who almost committed suicide, thankfully didn't achieve it because of cyberbullying. We've talked on those issues with kids. We've tried to say, listen, there are responsible behaviors that you have to carry on for yourself. You have to be peers, supporting other peers to act responsibly. We've talked about the fact that they are not going in 12 years have a uh, climate change that, that ends their life on this earth. It isn't gonna happen. Use common sense, folks. Enough of us have been around for years that have heard this for year after year after year. Do we need to take care of the environment? Absolutely. I started out my college career majoring in forestry. I love nature. I spend a lot of money supporting nature conservation. I put my money where my mouth is. And so I wanna do that. But we need to tell kids the truth 
But we also need to get to the issues of, of values as well. In this country today, there are less guns per capita than there were in years gone by. And we didn't have mass shootings. And we had weapons equal to what you would call the assault rifle today in our modern vernacular we had in the past. And those weren't used on other people. So bottom line is what is causing that? And as I said earlier, I don't know if you were here yet, I said it's a combination of numerous things, mental health concerns, spiritual concerns, value concerns. How do you and we used, to, we used to have a common value in this country. Even the person who uh, said, you know, the, the guy upstairs is gonna get me, and it didn't stop him from doing what he was doing. But the majority of people had that same concept that there are values, Judeo-Christian values, that made this country great, that allowed us to be free people, though our founder said, if we were angels, we wouldn't need government. But because we aren't, we need some type of government, and that's why a constitution was put in, and our government is the way it is. So, I'm working, if I can get back to what we've done to try to help your concerns as a medical doctor. The 21st Century Cures Act, which will do research in all of these areas, including why people are committing acts of violence. NIH, CDC, we also put a very large component that a friend of mine, a member of Congress, worked seven years to try to get a mental health component upped, and we got that in, in, in this uh, uh, 21st Century Cures Act. Substantive to that, we put, I think, $75 million into school safety issues to upgrade uh, facilities to train teachers, to train law enforcement on how to deal with it, to recognize it, red flag law as, as, as so. Um, we did a NICS fix, making it much more complete in the background checks and not a single event this past weekend and this week with a knife would have been changed by what the, what the uh, Democrats have sent to the Senate and sit there right now. Not a single one would have been affected That's by that. That's not a reason not so, yeah. we are looking yeah. for, slave religion. it is a reason to not simply do something. Let's do what works. And that's why I say, put that task force together, get it out of politics, and get a, get a group that are committed to doing something that actually is based upon science, based upon statistics, and based upon reality, and get that done. But, but sir, but we need Cunningham a multi-million dollar task force to... Let's go on to the next question. I think there I answered no um, Dorothy from Parma. Why are you silent? Why do you do and say nothing about Trump's lying, his admitted use of sexual assault as a means of introduction? Why do you think you know more than over 1,000 federal prosecutors regarding Trump's obstruction of justice? Um, there was no collusion. Oh. Oh, there was no, there was no Stop. obstruction. Stop. Oh, yeah. And uh, out of... Um, almost $25 million expended, which, which 2,008 it? subpoenas, 458. He spent more than that on his golf. He spent more than that on his golf. Come on. So not no collusion. That's no obstruction. Now, in, in, in my support for the president, it's a support for his policy. I read it. I read the whole thing. And your hair isn't on fire? Uh, no, it's not at all. Uh, wow. uh, President right. Trump, President Trump was the one who gave his own legal counsel um, carte blanche approval to meet with him. Is that and now and he was the one. McGahn was Congress. one that gave more uh, incendiary information of, of anything. To Congress. So, bottom line is, um, uh, no collusion. No obstruction. There was obstruction. And, uh, and, 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 and those of you, those of you who, those of you who love Mueller, those of you who love Mueller, no, I love the law. And Rosenstein, and beforehand, thought that he would win it. No one is above. Okay, let's go to the other question. Let's go to the other question. I, I have a clarification for my previous let's question. Let's go to the rest of the question. The rest of the question was, um, how could I? support this president. Well, this president, though he has a salty character, I certainly couldn't hurt, hurt, uh, support Hillary. Uh, she has her problems, and I think she, the legal problems are going to develop for her. But she did it. But she did it. So I was, I'm thankful, I'm thankful she did it. And Trump, Trump has, what has he done? 
What you spoke about to wonderful. To please let me answer the question, please. Please. You make it difficult for the people who do want to hear something other than what you want to talk about and not give me an opportunity to answer the questions. Okay? When we lose the when we lose the ability to forgive and work together in this country, we lose this country. That's why I'm here. When we lose the ability Wait, to hold forgive? people accountable. That's why I'm here. Yeah. What, what is it you want us to forgive? When you can, when you can forgive the majority of people through our process who elected a president who has put two Supreme Court justices in mm -hmm. that, understand, yeah. one of them. that yeah. understand the rule of law and the Constitution. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you have a president that stood four square behind what he said about support for life, and has been a pro-life president. Yeah, that's why. Why, why wouldn't I support it? When you have a president who has led us, Congress, in enacting the strongest regulatory reforms that has rebounded this economy in huge ways, to the point that we have the lowest unemployment rate since 1969 when I graduated from from high school. When you have the lowest unemployment for um, uh, most of the groups, including African Americans. Hispanic, Asians, and women, almost in history of keeping records of that. Um, his policies are working. When he led us to pass the strongest tax reform package for who? Yeah, for yeah. everybody. And if you have an opportunity, if you have an opportunity to read, you'll find out we read the one percent. The one percent got the lowest percentage increase as a result of tax cuts. But they got the the middle money. classes had the greatest increase, well, and it's proved class, not by Republican statistics, but CBO. Okay. And so bottom line is, while I don't like his tweets, and I've stated that in multiple town hall meetings, and I've said I wish that 15 to, or 20 percent of those tweets would go away, because i got to answer that. I've told, told his, his office, his liaison in my office. office. So pictures, you bet I am. I'm proud of here. I'm proud of what this president oh, oh. has accomplished. Oh, you know, the scary part is you believe this stuff that comes out of your So but, but you you if you if you have a chance if you have a chance to look at something other than CNN, you'll find <laughs> that. <laughs> Douglas from Jackson State regarding city, state, federal funding bringing education systems to downtown in urban environments, allowing educated youth programs to push high crime rates, living areas in populated city centers. So it's actually elaborate on that. That is Douglas from Jackson. Douglas, could you? Yeah, yeah I can elaborate. I, I think so. Me looking from the outside, as as a you know Jackson City uh, uh, member, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at. I see some programs and institutions coming inside Jackson, and we talk about the gun violence and different programs and the education, like educating the youth about, um, I, I guess, different uh, different philosophies of life. Um, but bringing some of those things into the downtown area, where where the heart of your city or the heart of your village or the heart of, of what, whatever it is uh, where you're living, uh, I, I particularly speak of Jackson. So we see some of these art. Uh, the art school coming downtown, the, the old Masonic building, the Vermilion's building, yeah. is now being restored into, uh, you know, it's, it's bringing some educated, uh, it's bringing a lifestyle to the downtown city center that's going to change, it's, I think it starts from within and as it spreads out, uh, is there any funding, because we have all these buildings and you start to see the restoration of, of the city center, is there any funding through like the education, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with the bills or how that whole that whole system works. But is there any funding that might be able to help um, local entities, government uh, municipalities, bring stuff in in order to bring a different socioeconomic or bring a different populated uh, youth or even young adults uh, to one, it encourages the economy to. It brings a diverse culture, uh, a growing, a, a, a positive, diverse culture into these areas that I think as it progresses through your cities and blocks and as it grows, this is, I, I think, when we think of change, um, this is my idea of, of, of how that could 
uh, be positively affecting our communities, which would be our, our homes and families and all, all that. So, so long story short, is there anything that we can do to enhance funding or the growth of looking at universities or even uh, community colleges or, or, or different? Uh, well, that's why, you're, that's why you're seeing what's taking place in the rejuvenation of downtown Jackson. And it's not going to happen overnight, sure. but you've seen a lot. And it's not only coming from government grants and programs that uh, communities have to compete for. Uh, they have to justify that those dollars are being spent for the appropriate purposes. And we would expect that. Um, but that's the reason why a number of things, including uh, the demolition of some of the blighted areas, downtown and otherwise, are taking place. But there's only so much money to go around. The feds, we've done a number of things, starting with uh, uh, the last uh, couple of years in Barack Obama's presidency, uh, with evolving in the specific area of education and career and job development training, devolving that back to the states and to the local communities, including not only community colleges, ISDs, and Jackson sets the tone in a great way for all of that with the, with the coordination between our career center, the ISD, uh, Jackson College, and then a number of uh, uh, business sector uh, projects, shop rat, and, and, and like that, including paid internships, that now there are dollars that will come, including Pell Grant money, that can go not simply to um, traditional educational institutions, but uh, uh, business associations that will actually do job training and development. But that's why it's taking place here. But again, I think it'd be better not simply devolving, but letting the dollars stay in the communities and the states, rather than sending them to Washington to have us send it back. And that's why we took 45 separate but redundant, in many cases, overlapping job training programs at the federal level and downsized that to 15. The House tried to get it to 7, but the compromise ended up with 15. We'll keep doing that. And then when you get to um, safety issues, those dollars are available for Jackson High School, for instance, if they want to upgrade their security for their schools so the kids can go to that school and feel like they are protected walk through the metal detector, or if that's needed, or they see a, um, a police officer, resource person uh, in the classroom, or they know that there are other provisions that have been taken care of to make them safe. So we, we step up, but that's why you see what's going on here. And then let me also give a plug to the local industries. Consumers has done a lot in generating the push to to upgrade this downtown and put money toward it and other uh, major institutions around here. So it's a community effort. Um, I Deborah from here in Jackson writes, will you help with our grassroots organization to build urban development on our south side community? Certainly, I'm, I'm delighted to be an asset to that. But again, my philosophy is let's have that yeah, okay. I'd like to add to that. You know, first of all, the demolishing, you know, even in that time of period, you know, it was a bad idea how it all came about, but I'm not here to debate that today, you know, because there's a lot of homes that could have been saved and should have been saved, even resource centers that was demolished and did not need to come down. But I'm not here to debate that. Again, I'm talking about my community. And I have no problem with you, Mr. Wahlberg. I have always, um, Congressman, voted for you for some years now. I am a Democrat. So, but I, 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 I look at you for the person that you are. And I think that's one problem that we have in Jackson and, and surrounds us in Jackson is that we don't understand, we don't take the time to get to know one another. We, I don't know if it's a system that we didn't create here in Jackson. I've been here almost all my life but I also got away from here. So I know also it's a system that's built in this in Jackson that really needs to come down. Now, we as a grassroots organization got to bring it down because again, we got to get back to value. We got to get back to taking care of one another. We don't have that in Jackson. We are all now so divided. 
So what we're trying to do, we're honestly pulling people together <laughs> in, in our neighborhood, and I'm, I'm expanding on into Ohio, because I'm just thinking like, you know, will you wake up? Will the community just wake up and understand that the south side of Jackson, we have no grocery stores, there's no food, no fresh foods, people ill, heart disease, strokes, you know, the number one causes. And then when you go to your, your legislators and ask for just a little help, you know, let's create some, let's get something in here where we can eat and people can have jobs and we can live as a community. When you, when you actually put us in as a desert and, and, and actually start treating people as if they're low class and they don't, and, 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 and that, you know, it's just a lot going on here in Jackson, Mr. Walker. Yeah. You know, and, and we're trying to build an agriculture, you know, infrastructure program because we need to eat. All of us, everyone in the community has to eat. And not only that, maybe then expand out. Mm -hmm. You know what? I, but it's, we're, we're pulling grassroots organizations together. Good. Diane um, Washington, Washington, you know, Thomas Burr. I can't, we're pulling them all together. We're trying to actually really let them know it's not about one person. We got to stop giving to one, one organization thinking that they're going to do what's needed to be done. We got to, we got to break down when we're giving out these CBDGs, grant money funding that you guys are, the states are sending in to be funded. We got to make sure that these, these, these sections of communities and wards are being all equally, you know, we can't just keep putting it in, in, in one little area. That's where we're losing, and it's not fair to the community and or I, the people. And you, and you know I agree with you. If you watch me, I've spent a lot of time on the South Side. Yeah, I grew up in the South Side of Chicago, so anytime South Side doesn't... Anytime I to you, you have always yeah. listened. But if it is not, you know, you have always put in... You, so that's why, I'm, you know, I've been waiting to see you. Because I've been calling, but then, you know, I can't get to you. You know, so when I got the invitation, I was like, perfect. You know, and I'm trying to get to Julia um, Alexander because that's what she does. She's agriculture. But make, make sure the main emphasis needs to be still on, this, on the local city government. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why we're trying. That's, again, why we're trying to devolve mm -hmm. some of what we've taken, I believe, unconstitutionally at the federal level from the state and the local communities. The, the federal government should be the least important <laughs> governmental system to your life. Yeah. That's how it was intended to be. Well, if, if, know, if, if, if well, Adams and Washington... That's true, too. But the government, too, has the USDA. You know oh, yeah. what I'm saying? You have other infrastructure that's all apart and have funding. And, and that's why we need to... Help and, and, yeah. and, and get people off. You just said you're a part of conservation. See, I'm a... Look, see, I'm a... Yeah, I told you now. You know, I... I, I, I'm, I'm also educated. I educate myself when I, I'm not just here just speaking. I educate myself. So I know also there's all kind of funding also that the government also can come in and help with. And we're going that route. We're, we're taking the steps there too. So, but you know, it's just like I say, a process. And, and, and our office is already always ready and willing mm -hmm. to help in the process yeah. of supporting an effort from a local community. I know that, thank you. To hear, uh, to get the right agency to hear <laughs> your request and act on it. That always won't be successful, but um, you have resources on the south side that even some of the suburban areas don't have, especially when you think about the impact of the religious organizations, the churches and, uh, that, that are there. Okay, now if Mr. We can Walbert, get, if we can get. Listen, now Mr. Walbert, you know, and I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be, you know, me. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is, right now on the south side, even though we have all them, you say the churches, and what I'm saying to you is, we need your help too. No, I've, need, and I've said that. You understand? But, but, but hear, hear, what, hear what I'm saying about the churches. Those, I, when I'm talking about the I'm churches, you. you're talking about numbers. Mm -hmm. You've got numbers, and yeah. you've got people that can be motivated by, by a pastor yes. who will yeah. take action far beyond what other, and I was a former pastor. Yes, true. 
I wish I had the power yeah. of the African American pastor yes. to True. mobilize. True. And to mobilize for the good. I'm on them too. And, 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 Don't get it wrong. And I've been on, on them, them too. <laughs> I've, been on, I've been on them too. As, I know. As you you met my new minister, so he, he, you know, I'm hoping. What I'm saying is, yes. we are certainly open to working that area. Yes. I understand when I go and visit some of the, the fast food restaurants that are on the south side. Yes. And I want them to be there. Yes. But I also want a supermarket there. Yes. And, and, and that only comes sometimes by the squeaky wheel getting the grease yes. and being, keep at it yeah. in numbers, yeah. get associations of, of business as well to step up and say, we want to help on that too, okay. until we prove that it's viable okay. and we can make it last. Okay. And, and that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's the root of the, of the amazing you. miracle that America was. Yeah. It was run by the people. Right. They didn't the look people. to their. We are. We the people here. And yes. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Walmart. I can take one more question. Or are we finished? Mm -hmm. Judy from Jackson simply writes federal taxes. That's me. I worked for 43 years. Been mar I have been retired for eight years. During this time, I have had little or no increases in my income, in my income, social. and my social security. I have social security and a pension. This last, since the tax break, this last year, I paid more in taxes. I, my, I will be make, paying more on my social security and pension this year. And I wonder why that is. Well, without knowing your your specifics, I'd encourage you to call Sue in my office. She does all of our tax uh, policy, Medicare, Social Security issues, and she may be able to find the answer for you on that. Um, it, there were certainly tax reform law changes. Um, sometimes the tax preparer I have H and R block. Doesn't understand it all, and it, it could be a mistake. It might not be. No, I but I'd encourage you. To, I'd encourage you to check with our office again. Sue in our office will be the one that you'll end up talking to. Uh, sometimes she's a miracle worker. Yes, she is. And uh, I would I would suggest that. You had two more. Let's finish it. Becky from Springport. Ask two questions. Do you support President Trump? Do you support right to life? I've answered that already. I support President Trump's policy. I don't always support his personality, his language, but I support his policy. Uh, I support I, one, one, one of the biggest things, uh, I support the law. And this is the law that, 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 that the Obama law. has, and the courts, and the courts, no, the reality is, folks, the reality, you can't have it both ways. Uh, there is the court decision that mandates that we can only keep the children in that lockup for 20 days. So anyway, I'm pro-life, and I support President Trump's policy. Yes. Doug from Jackson. Implementation of shot spotter technology in urban centers with harsher penalties towards violent crimes and more rehabilitation measures for nonviolent offenders. Uh, I didn't hear that first part of the question. Implementation of shot spotter technology in urban centers with harsher penalties towards violent crimes. Um, shot spotter, that's a new term to me. Is that a red flag? So, so it's a triangulation, so if shots fired, they've got certain detectors oh. uh, placed around areas or more prone to areas of those crime rates of those shots, so we can go back a couple days ago to the fair. Um, certain, something like that, you can triangulate it back to a specific location. Um, I'm looking, if there is a, a movement in Washington to uh, uh, decrease those, those violent crimes, is there any funding that might be able to be pushed back down to local? I, there there I may know. indeed be, and in a law enforcement component. Sure. Uh, there, there may indeed be for that. Or even the state. Um, 
or you'd have to ask the state rep on that. But I'm sure for law enforcement, there are funds available to enhance safety and security for our communities through law enforcement. Whether they're specifically for Shot Spotter, I don't know. Sure. Um, but of, of course, with Shot Spotter, you also have to be concerned about due process, uh, privacy rights, and all the rest to go with it. But we want to be able to get the perpetrators as quickly as possible and carry out the law to the extent of the law. Um, we have very solid, significant laws in place against gun violence. We have to make sure that our court systems carry that out. On the other issue, the side with nonviolent criminals, I'm delighted to see what the president has done uh, in offering opportunities, second chance opportunities, and releasing some people from prison settings who are there for nonviolent reasons and getting them out into a setting where they truly at least have the opportunity for rehabilitation and becoming productive in society again. I'm delighted to see the, the business community that I've talked to, very open to hiring. As long as there's some stipulations and expectations, hiring um, uh, uh, ex-offenders uh, and putting them to work, and we're finding some positive results there as well. Well, I want to say thank you. I think we got through all of the, the cards and uh, maybe could have got through a few more. Uh, but uh, I want you to have a great weekend here in Pure Michigan. And we'll keep working. Uh, it's a large district, but I'm privileged to represent this district, and we'll do it to the best of my ability. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Vote them out.